Uh, I mean, that was I mean, almost two different ball games, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I just, uh, you know, we knew Georgia Tech's just prolific offensively and, you know, great bodies, great swings, quick bats on every fastball uh, to start. And, I'm, you know, they were even better than advertised. And then for us to be down so much and to hang in there was, uh, was awesome. And then you got to the last eight innings, I guess, where we kept them to maybe one run, we, or both teams. It was just two totally different deals. And it was a crazy ball game, but yeah, our guys hung in there. And that, we all know that we've, we've got to get better in some areas. We've talked about that and been honest about that. But uh, the resolve is you're kind of working through things and the character uh, that I see of our, of our coaches and of our players. And I, I can hear it in the players when they speak. Man, we, they don't care who gets the credit. Uh, just overheard Brody Wortham talking, um, and, and yeah, I did believe in him. I wanted to win, and uh, I, I, I just was just screaming out, "Hey, let's do! Make sure we're doing things to win instead of, you know, keeping the game going." And Kirby stole second, and then Wortham hits, and I believe in Josh Hall too. He'd already had three hits. I just uh, the left on left right there. I just uh, I'd seen it so much through the fall, and even some of these guys hadn't got started so much, and I think. Wortham was probably one for 10 on the season, but I'd seen a body of work that everybody else has not and believe he was a, the right matchup right there. So Gabe had asked me about it and I said, absolutely, let's do that. And it, and it, and it worked out. Uh, Carter Wright come in and just caught his heart out. He got crossed up and got, got blown up one time there, uh, rattled around and just hung in. Just every piece that come in the game contributed and, and did something for us. So. Hopefully, as we're trying to reset and settle with so many guys that are kind of out and dinged up right now, that if you can still have success and still hang in a ball game and still come back and be competitive, that, you know, it, it, I, I've said it before, it keeps creating a stronger team. So uh, more pieces being involved. Uh, you know, we desperately want to get some guys back and, and, and get back to, to doing some things. but. Um, nonetheless, I thought that was huge for Bauman out of the bullpen. I thought uh, Isbell looked much, much better uh, tonight. It just took the second half of the, the game, the, the last eight innings, to get to some of that. But the, the guys hang in there. It's not perfect, but they do hang in there and they keep battling. And the man, the woman, the team that, that never quits, you know, is hard to beat. And uh, I thought we showed that tonight. Talk about being, being hard to beat. Uh, your staff gives up 22 hits, but only walks one batter. What does that mean as far as, as what taking things away from this victory and, and from a early rough performance by the staff? Yeah. Um, well, it's not like we're chasing everything. You know, if you're if you're giving up twenty hits and walking five or six, they're gonna score that much that many more runs. So we got it down to the hard contact. I think there's levels of contact. What Coach Rock was my pitching coach in college had taught me there's there's hard contact and then there's uh, taking the sting out of the swing, and then there's that third level of swing and miss. And um, I, I think we're on a journey with our, with our pitchers of we're sitting in the hard contact, and, and hopefully we can start softening that up more consistently as we go. But it's nice not having both of those things happening at the same time. And for the most part, for an amateur baseball team and a staff that we're used to, they have cut down the walks, and it is getting us hit harder. We've got to start getting to the point where two strikes of being able to get the breaking ball to the floor. I think that'll 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 take some of that stuff away. So I think it's execution of a pitch. And they did a nice job with that early. Southeastern Louisiana made us sit and have conversation about two strikes, how they, they wore us out. So yeah, we're still giving up way too hard a contact. It's kind of mind boggling a little bit, but it's a great point you bring up with the, you know, the one walk. And so I think we're working through a process. And that's why I say our coaches and our players do everything we ask them to do. It's an amazing group. Um, you, you want to, to be undefeated and win every ball game. But they're on a journey of listening and trying and, and, and connected and doing everything that they can. So uh, because they are doing that, uh, I'm hopeful that we'll start getting to that second tier of taking the sting out of the swing and then hopefully eventually uh, producing some swing and miss. And, in big moments as we keep keep getting settled. You had a lot of freshmen step up this year, but you know now you've got Gavin Miller who, who has the spot at third base, and I know he, he had a couple of hits tonight, but just, you know, obviously young core, but yeah. just Gavin, just what did you see from him tonight and, and yeah. what really stuck out about his performance? 
I just take this short, short season so far, and I thought uh, Bryson Ware took off like crazy, and it probably cost him some opportunities early. And then when he got in there, it, like, it was almost like, um, I'm not really ready today. And we actually, you know, was honest and talked about that. And that's real excited about Gavin because I think he's an eventual everyday player. And he came back in there as, I think, Saturday and tonight and, and looked apart and had some good passes at the ball. Uh, making a couple of plays, I just, you know, confidence comes from acquiring skill. He is starting that that process in these last couple of games that he's played is pretty exciting because we, we believe he's going to be, a, you know, a double, use the whole field, just a really good everyday baseball player for us. And for him to not only be playing a little bit right now as needed, uh, but contributing is really exciting. Which 10,000 foot view for what you just saw a team that's without a few of its top guys. You, you get Josh Hall, Gavin Miller, Mike Bello. I mean, you get, I mean, to, to come back from that big of a deficit without some of your top guys and yeah. just to, to, I mean, just what does that show you about this team? Yeah, I kind of set back on it too. You know, there was that point where you know, I don't think we lost three games in a row last year. The team didn't. We were one of five teams in America out of 300 teams tonight. <laughs> to not lose three games in a row. That's a pretty good model of consistency as far as amateur baseball. And we were on the, the threshold, the doorstep, and it's not something that we advertise. You know, it's not like before the game I said, hey, we had, did not lose three games in a row last year because we're really trying to be more process-oriented than result-oriented. And then I just, full disclosure, I just, as it was not going good at all, I just said, do no harm to myself. I'm like, they got to dig out of something. We're not in the same rhythm we were as we were rolling and scoring runs and, and, and covering up a lot of stuff uh, with the pitching staff, which we've documented a little bit. Um, and I just, you know, I made a decision to let's, let's do no harm here and let's don't start, you know, peeling at anything or anybody. And uh, let me let me let me watch. Let me trust our people. And I'm not sure I could have done that my first year or two as a head coach here. Um, so I'm not patting myself on that shoulder anything either but I'm just like if they've done everything I ask them to do and they're in a little rut right now what's the proper response for me as a coach and the do no harm was good and I just uh, you know, I'm thankful at least for a day that I took that because uh, they kind of did it you know they kind of hung in there and you talk about maybe worth them hitting late but you allowed a team to kind of steady it themselves instead of being poked or, or picking at them so that's another reason that if I can if I can absolutely just keep focusing on doing no harm and try to lead well. And um, I develop a little more trust with this team because we're about to play 10 weekends of SEC play and it's not going to always be a, a Sunday drive, 70 miles per, uh, 70 degrees and sunny and having fun out there. It's going to be hard. This is year 22 in the SEC. It's never not been hard. The great years, the good years, or the bad years, it's never not been hard. So. Uh, I like them fighting through this. I like it. I, I, I love it. I am a pitching guy, but I absolutely, it's one of the most, tonight was one of my favorite games that we've, that, that I've been a part of in an Auburn uniform for me personally, just watching a team do it themselves and hang in there. And you're right, not having four or five pieces. All that's about making an excuse for us too. And not having those four or five pieces and somebody, one of those guys not being able to come off the bench and hit and somebody new having to do it. And I just, uh, I liked it.